You cannot make this until you find this. You're not able to make any money and nothing can happen unless you find deals. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 lead sources that we actually utilize in our business that you can utilize to go out and find deals. I own Faster House, which is a local house buying company here in St. Louis, and we buy 250 to 300 houses a year, which requires us to get two to 300 leads per month. So we're gonna go over the ways that we get leads that you can actually go implement right now. If you appreciate that, hit that like button and I can do more videos like this that walk you through what we actually do in our businesses every single day. Let's just start this off with a bang. The number one way that we find leads and eventually buy houses and my favorite way is through other wholesalers. Now, wholesalers are real estate investors that go out and find properties and get them under contract to purchase. And usually they don't close on them. They want to sell them to somebody else while they have the property under contract. It's called wholesaling. And there are a ton of wholesalers. There's wholesalers in your market that do this at a high level like us. And then there's wholesalers that do one or two a year. But just know that there are a ton of different wholesalers that you can connect with that will bring you leads so that you can make money. Now let's talk about the top ways to find these wholesalers so that they can do exactly that. The best way, in my opinion, and the most fruitful use of your time will be going to local real estate investing meetups. You can go to meetup.com and find local real estate investing meetups in your area. We have one in St. Louis called Buyers Club, and we have 250 to 300 people that come every single month in our office, and they do deals at the actual meeting. There's probably 30 to 50 wholesalers that show up to every single meeting. We let some of them go to the front of the stage and say properties that they're looking to actually sell that night. And we sell properties there. So the best place to go to get active deals is your local meetup. You can also go to local real estate investing Facebook groups and poke around there. Now there are, of course, some knuckleheads there, but in general, there are active real estate investors in those groups. Not every property they shop is, of course, a good deal, but you will see the active wholesalers and the people that are continually posting deals, the goal would be to connect with them offline. So they maybe start to bring you their deals before they even shop them to the open public. All right. Lead source number two that I really, really like is driving for dollars. Drive for dollars is driving around and looking for distressed properties. Now in the description, there is a link to a free trial for deal machine, which is an app that trains you, teaches you and shows you how to do all this yourself. And the trial's free and you get some free deal credits. So you can check that out if you want, but driving for dollars is a great way to own your lead flow because if you're willing to spend time out driving around and you use an app like that to help you be efficient you will get leads and you will get deals i'm not going to go into a whole explanation of how to drive for dollars efficiently just know you're going to be driving around in neighborhoods that you know you want to own properties in and looking for that distressed property that fixer up or that handyman special that that house that has boarded up windows and maybe a sticker on the front door or the grass is like this tall off the ground and you can tell the property is vacant and not cared for. There is a process to get a hold of that owner and that owner is very, 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 three varies, likely to sell to an investor. Now it may not be you and it may not be that week that you're looking at the house, but if you remain in contact with that owner, there's a high likelihood you'll have a chance at eventually buying it. Number three, direct mail. Now this one is a little bit more expensive, but this is the most tried and true of pretty much any lead source you can have. Direct mail is sending out either postcards or letters or mailers to a group of people and letting them know that you want to potentially buy their house if they're indeed looking to sell. Now, of course, you could just blanket a neighborhood and send a ton of direct mail and you would maybe get a lead or two from that, but that's pretty inefficient. The best way to do that is to use a service that strips down some of these property characteristics and getting you a list of properties that have a higher likelihood of selling to a real estate investor because they're in pre-foreclosure, the owners are going through a divorce, they are behind on their taxes, they're behind on their payments, the property has a lien on it or something like that. Those type of houses, you can search for them 
through public data so you're not just sending mail to a house that nobody's going to sell, especially to a real estate investor like you at a discount. Now, I do have another free trial in the description to Batch Leads, and they do a lot of that for you. So go ahead and check that out. Again, that trial's free. I'm, I'm not making any money on your trial. It's just a way for you to kind of peek behind the curtains and see what direct mail and lead stacking and list stacking looks like. So apparently I forgot number four. So I'm going back the next day and recording this. So here's number four, real estate agents. This is similar to wholesalers, but it can be better. Real estate agents are in and out of houses all day, every day. Now, a majority of those houses are retail ready houses that you're not going to actually buy as an investment property, but a good agent is going to come across a few of these investment type properties a year. And if you're connected with that agent, you're going to get that lead sent your way. We're talking hoarder houses or somebody that has to move quickly or a house that won't pass occupancy or inspection and is gonna be a pain for that agent to sell. You're their easy button. They will bring you in on the deal. And the beautiful thing is they already have the relationship built with that homeowner. So you don't have to go in and build that rapport. That rapport is already built. So they're going to come in and bring you in on the deal. And you are going to be looked at as the savior, the one that is going to give them a cash offer. They're going to have the other option to maybe list with that agent, but you're the cash offer. And I promise you, the agent is most of the time going to push that cash offer because it's easy for them. They get paid both sides of the commission and they're done with the deal in a few weeks. So agents are amazing to connect with. Now, not all of them understand real estate investors. So finding ones that do is valuable or training up ones that don't and letting them know what they need to know and what investment properties look like will be very, very beneficial to you. Now, finding real estate agents that deal with investors is, is pretty easy, similar to what we talked about earlier, but finding them at your local meetups, local meetups are flush with real estate agents that work with investors. So go there and meet them. And you know agents by just probably friends of friends or, or seeing billboards or seeing signs on street corners and things like that. So find the agents, connect with them and befriend five or 10 of them, get to know them personally, and they will start to bring you their leads and their deals. And you will get a free gravy train of leads that are hopefully giving you a handful of leads a month just because you develop relationships with five to 10 agents. The fifth lead source and one of my favorites is dealing with connectors that you know. Now, if you're not telling everybody that you are a real estate investor or that you want to be a real estate investor, then you are missing out on a ton of opportunity dealing with your connectors. You have a bigger sphere of influence than you think. The emails that you have in your email inbox, the numbers that you have in your phone, and however many people you have following you on social media, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you need to let those people know that you are an aspiring real estate investor. You see, people come across distressed properties all the time. Now, it's not something that everybody comes across every week, but there's enough people out there that maybe once every year, every other year, they know somebody or somebody that's directly connected with them is in pre-foreclosure, inheriting a house from a parent, some type of property that they don't want, a hoarder house, something that they either know of or hear of. And if you let them know that you invest in real estate when they know of it or hear of it, they will bring it to you because you're able to provide the service of giving an all cash offer. So make connections with connectors, post about it on social media. In fact, I have a post in my real estate investing community that I used in the past and I copy and pasted. And a lot of my students took that exact post, changed a few of the names and put it on their personal Facebook page and got a ton of leads. I think at last check, you know, a handful of people did it and there was 20 or 30 leads that they got from just simply posting on social media, how I word things, but also just letting people know that they invest. So wherever you're at, use your connections and your sphere of influence, whether you're on the golf course, whether you're going shopping, out to dinner, at work, family reunion, whatever it is, let people know that you invest in real estate and you're looking for distressed properties. If you do it enough and you do it consistently, you will get lead flow. Number six is sending out cold text to people to see if they are interested in selling their house. Now you do have to be careful with this one. You have to make sure to sweep for the DNC or do not call list. People register on that list and you cannot cold reach out to them to try to buy something from them. However, 
there are lists that you can buy that you can legally text somebody asking for them if they want to sell their house. Now you're going to get a ton of no's and a ton of screw you's, but you will get some leads from this or at least asking them if they know anybody that's looking to actually sell their house because it's distressed to a real estate investor, they may know someone. Now be careful about that DNC list, but there are ways to legally do this. There's companies like Lead Sherpa that do this for you and walk you through the practices to make you sure you do this legally. Number seven is bandit signs. Those little two foot by three foot signs that you see on the side of the road, they're either usually white or yellow, and they say we buy houses on them in Sharpie marker or maybe in print. Those are wholesalers. 90% of the people that put out those signs are wholesalers that don't want to close on a house. So this is another way to connect with wholesalers. You see a bandit sign. If you're not driving, snap a picture of it, call or text that number and get connected with that wholesaler. But you can also put out these signs yourself. We have done this in the past and it does work. There's places online where you can go buy, you know, maybe 50 or 100 signs for a couple hundred bucks. Then you can go out and put them out on street corners, up on poles and get people texting you and calling you if they have a house that they want to sell. A couple tips with this one, make sure to check your local municipality laws to see if it's okay and when and where you can put these signs. A lot of people don't do that, which is not the end of the world, but I would suggest if you're gonna do it or not, maybe using a Google number on that sign and not your personal self. You will get calls, you will get leads. I put out signs in college for budget painting, which was a painting business that me and my business partner, that's still my business partner to today, Lucas, we put out signs, budget painting, we'll paint your house on a budget. And for five summers in a row, we got consistent business to paint decks and, and insides and outsides of houses. So utilize them at least by calling the people on the signs that you see, or maybe even buying some signs yourself. Number Number eight is cold calling, just like cold texting, except you're actually calling. Again, beware of that DNC list and get ready to get hung up and yell that a lot. But there are ways to do it the right way. And there are even dialers out there that will dial for you. So again, check out the description of this video. You will see a free trial to batch leads, which will give you a potential free trial to a dialer and potentially a list to kind of stack the right way, as I mentioned earlier, where you can call and or text. Number nine is getting into the Facebook ad business. Now that may scare you, but it shouldn't because Facebook ads are very, very easy and simple and cheap to implement. There are a ton of different strategies we're not going to get into, but we spend a lot of money on Facebook ads in my flipping business, as well as in my education business. And Facebook ad manager walks you through the entire process. And there's tons of incredible videos on YouTube that will walk you through this, but you can put out some ads and maybe spend a couple hundred bucks a month on Facebook ads to at least get your name and brand out there and you will get some calls. Now, like anything else, they may not be the highest quality calls or they may be you have to work through that with your ad copy, your ad type and how you filter the actual leads, but you will get leads for putting out Facebook ads and it's honestly one of the cheaper ways to get your name out there. And number 10 may throw you a little bit for a loop, but it's dealing with senior care facilities. If you didn't know, 10,000 people turn 65 every single day. The boom generation is getting older and they are moving into assisted care facilities at a record rate. What does that mean? Or is there an opportunity for you? Well, a lot of them have retirement savings, but most of them have their biggest financial asset tied up in their house and senior care facilities are not cheap. So if they want to stay there for a long period of time, a lot of them are having to sell their house and some of them just want a quick cash offer because a lot of houses won't sell in the open market. They haven't been updated in a long time. They won't pass occupancy. They won't pass code. They're just looking for, hey, give me a cash offer now. And obviously they can list it if they want, but a lot of them go with that cash offer. So just look up the local senior care facilities in your area and go contact them and talk to the marketing director whose job is to fill the units and let them know and get to know them. Let them know that you buy houses and give them your card. And if somebody that they're looking to get in their facility talks about financial constraints or need to sell their house, and you have built a good relationship with this marketing director, they can potentially hand that person your card and they can call you. The incentive for them is they get their property filled faster and probably make bonuses and make more money. And the benefit for you is you get a lead and the benefit for the person going into the facility is they get cash now. So it's a win-win situation and it's, it's actually a win-win-win situation. And it's kind of a next level thing that does require time and energy and effort, but it is a good use of your time. The biggest thing I want you to take away from this is there is basically an unlimited way to get leads and deals coming across your plate. I just gave you 10, there's probably 
probably about 20 or 30 more that I could name right now. So make sure to focus on two or three of these. I don't think you should try all 10. I think depending on your budget and your time available, you should try two, maybe three, and you should do them consistently for six months at a minimum. Like direct mail, you can't send one letter. You need to send one letter a month for six months to a big enough list. We buy just as many houses off of our fifth letter, which means our fifth mailing, than our first letter. So you have to hit the people at the right time consistently, and hopefully they'll save your letter or postcard in their desk drawer. And when something happens or some situation comes up and they need to sell their house, they will remember you or they will go find the card and give you a call. So be consistent and just focus on two or three, go deeper and then go wide. If you learned anything from this, and again, if you want more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with a friend that you know that's a real estate investor that's looking to get more leads coming across their plate. Check out the description. As I mentioned earlier, there are all those freebie trials that I talked about, as well as a free training that will walk you through a lot of the process of what to do after you get a property under contract. Check that out below. See you on the next one.